So in this video, we're going to talk about growth. And to introduce the topic, uh, we're going to uh, go along this outline here. Uh, we'll start out with a quick look at the macroeconomic production function. Second, we're going to look at the link between uh, output and investment. And third, we're going to look at the links between investment and capital accumulation, K. And that will give us a dynamic equation uh, on the basis of which we can develop uh, a graph which we'll ultimately use to analyze the model, to describe the model, analyze the model. So let me make some space here. <coughs> and uh, we start out with uh, 1, the production function. So production function uh, basically is y a function of k and l. So we're using capital and labor, uh, two uh, primary inputs, uh, in t uh, to produce output with a technology that's, des that's described by this function f. Now, we're assuming that we have constant returns to scale, which means that uh, we can uh, express this in intensive form as a function y f of k, where y is uh, income per capita and lowercase k is capital intensity. So here, uh, income or output per person per capita, and here the capital intensity. So that is the, these are the two variables in the model. Uh, we will uh, derive a diagram uh, that gives us y as a function of k. Now the whole model is essentially based on this production function. Uh, the production function has decreasing returns, so we have a standard uh, neoclassical assumption, decreasing returns of course meaning that uh, the more you use of the factor given labor, so the more capital you use per worker, uh, the more output you get, but that the increments the increases in output become smaller and smaller. In terms of calculus, that means that the first derivative is positive, the second derivative is negative, which means that the function looks something like that. So here we have f of k, y, and k, and that is a production function with decreasing returns to factors. Okay, uh, natural surface to introduce the, the issue, we'll go to the next page and talk about the links between y and i. We know from uh, our previous work that uh, at the macroeconomic equilibrium, investment is equal to savings. So investment is equal, in a closed economy, investment is equal to s plus t minus g or s plus s gov. Uh, savings of the government, we will now assume that the savings of the government are in the long run in balance. So we'll focus essentially on the private sector here. No foreign sector, no public sector. Or both are assumed in the long run in balance. And for macroeconomic equilibrium then, uh, I is just private investments just equal to private savings. So uh, we then further assume that S, the flow of savings, is just a fraction of income. And with the additional assumption that investment is determined by savings, so that all available savings, let me write it actually the other way around. So savings determine investment. Uh, then we can write that i is equal to s y and that is one of the fundamental uh, assumptions for this neoclassical growth model namely that investment is just a constant fraction of output let me write this down here so we take the savings propensity s as given and of income or output We take S as given, that's a parameter, and then whatever the level of income is, 
will determine what the level of investment is. Now, uh, this uh, is not an innocent assumption. This is what we call Say's Law. Uh, Say's Law assumes that there's no lack of effective demand, that there's no unemployment of factors. Essentially, all resources, all these savings, are utilized to uh, 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 increase productive capacity so that we are assuming from the get-go that there is no unemployment in the model. That is why we presumably can talk about the long run. Okay, next. Now, the links between investment and capital accumulation, I and K. For this, we need to introduce the time indices. So KT plus 1 is the capital stock in period T plus 1 is equal to, well, the capital stock that prevailed at the beginning of the period or in the last period, plus new gross investment minus depreciation. So delta is depreciation, the parameter depreciation. We can now uh, rewrite this as KT plus 1 minus KT equal to IT minus delta KT. So that we have here on the left hand side the change in the capital stock from period KT, uh, from period T to period T plus 1. Now we can further write, since we know that IT is equal to a constant fraction of output, we can write IT as SYT minus delta KT. Now further, we can write this in terms of uh, labor, so that we divide through by uh, the number of workers uh, n kt plus 1 minus kt over n is equal to syt over n t minus delta kt over n. Now this of course is equal to lowercase kt plus 1 kt plus 1 minus kt equal to syt minus delta kt. So we're getting close here. The change in the capital stock per worker is equal to a constant fraction of income per worker minus depreciation of capital per worker. Now this though we can further uh, simplify, we know namely that yt is equal to f of kt, so that we can fill in here the gap and write kt plus 1 minus kt equal to sf of kt minus delta kt. So here we have the fundamental uh, equation of accumulation uh, with a production function so that the change in the capital stock per worker on the left hand side uh, is equal to a constant fraction of output produced with capital intensity KT and the technology described by F minus delta KT. This is the equation that we're going to work with. And this is the equation that we're going to produce in a diagram but I'm actually going to go to a separate video for that.